Hey, welcome back, guys. This is our third live stream for today, and normally I would introduce our guest, but I think he has such an iconic voice and introduction, I'm going to let him do it himself. Can you do one for us like that? All right. Guys, get ready. Here we go. Whoa, a lot of pressure. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here, and welcome back to another very exciting live stream with Chris Doe. That is so good, dude! Okay, now you know who it is. It's Andrew Kramer, Video Copilot. Guys, he makes the most amazing tutorials, plugins, and tools for people in our industry, the motion graphics industry. He's worked on big things, little things, and everything in between. The latest thing you were telling me right before we went on air was THX. Yep. THX, what did you do for that and how did that come about? So, yeah, we did this uh, 60 second animation. Uh, I directed it and helped out with a lot of the animation. It was a pretty crazy project. Had a big city, spaceship, like just like a box inside of a box kind of uh, animation. And uh, one of those single camera animations. So, you make one change to the camera, you gotta pass it through to five other scenes, and then the challenge of art directing like something that's in motion like how do you keep the audience's attention on the thing you want them to look at while the camera is constantly moving yeah. how do you stage the cinematography when you know you have to move the camera through the space and so a lot of fun challenges but you know i think it turned out all right a lot of moving parts and pieces to that were you stressed out um i'm still stressed out <laughs> no <laughs> i mean you've delivered it's done it's done it's yeah done. You, you, there's always times where you're not exactly sure how you're going to do something or something's not quite getting for, far far enough along. Yeah. And that's that's the challenge, especially, you know, I'm, I'm doing some of the work, but I'm also directing, you know, creatively and you focus on something and then meanwhile, something else isn't totally getting there. And you just have to figure out how do you best balance the team so that everybody is effectively doing the most, uh, the thing they're most talented at. And once we just focused on that, rather than hitting everything with you know all of our effort, we focus on what are we good at, and then we'll figure out what's missing. And that really helped us push through. Mm. So you had mentioned you were the director of this. Did you also do the visual effects production, your team? Yep, we Okay, did. so you did the whole thing. Yep. And then you worked, because uh, part of the THX experience is this incredible soundscape. That, so is this a post score? Did they give you a score to work with? How did that work? So we had some amazing sound designers and- uh, Some uh, of the best, right? Listen, I mean, come on. Some, some, they worked on like Star Wars. Yeah, a couple and of small things. Some, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, Ben and Micho, the producers, like they came up with this great concept and we storyboarded it out. We did an animatic, like a pretty robust animatic. And then um, the sound design, the visuals were sort of changing, right? Uh, quite a bit. Yeah. So we didn't commit to all of the sound, but we always used a bit of a, like we wanted to be driven by sound effects. So that sort of like rumbling that comes up and then it kind of turns into the next scene. And I think they actually surprised me with the way that they sort of preemptively teased that big deep note sound and then kind of faded it into the next thing. And so it was fun for me because we're working on the visuals the whole time and we didn't get to see the final with all the sound until right up at the end. So this is a really collaborative process where visuals inspire sound, sound inspires visuals, and you go back and forth. Yeah. At some point, it's gotta be like, we're done with this, right? Like, Yeah, I yeah. think we knew, we were there like maybe six weeks out, but the challenge was those little details. All right, the spaceship, oh, should we have some little spaceships flying under there? Oh, well, let's do that. And then, you know, this transition could use a little distortion on the water line. Like, let's, a lot of just tedious things. And sometimes that requires you to re-render a scene or, oh, the camera goes through the water plane and it kind of creates a glitched frame or, or, or you have to render it without the water underneath it so that you can see through the effect. Like, just a lot of... It was compositing tricks and techniques, and we used After Effects to sort of blend those scenes together and you know, focusing on the transition so that they were fluid and fun. Because some scenes are done in Cinema 4D with Redshift, some of them done with Element, and you have to, you're not gonna have a singular 3D space. So you have to figure out a way to blend the transitions and not feel like you're cheating and just doing some cheap cross dissolve. You wanna like, ex like if, that, if it's inside of the refraction, you want it to feel like it's all the way in there until it's no longer visible, not just a quick fade out and, oh, we're in a new scene right now, you know. Uh, there's tricks, no doubt, but we tried <laughs> to hide them. Okay, everybody that's not a motion graphics, visual effects person, like, what are they talking about? But everybody that is knows this pain. That 
I don't know that it's like the last four percent that gets you across the finish line. It's where you spend all the love and the, the the crying, the ulcers. That's really where it is. Just to try to make it as perfect as possible. Did you work on it to the very last minute in which it was due, or did you finish ahead of time? What's smaller than a minute? <laughs> The courier is there. We're here to pick up the thing. And you're like, give me another 10 minutes. Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, because we were getting the sound back and we had to marry it all together. And so it was definitely a photo finish, but we were there for a while. So it was just, you know, those little things that, oh, we, let's get this right. Because once it's done, it'll, it'll just exist. And we, like, I don't know. I don't do that many professional projects. And so when I kind of got my hands on it, like, I wanted to make sure like it was as fun and cool as that it could be. And I think definitely leaving a little bit of myself, you know, out there to try to get it done and push it over the, that finish line, you know, our team, Dustin, Jake, Taylor, you know, like these guys were just working crazy times to get it through there. And like, I can't thank those guys enough. Like in the, the design team early on, like everybody sort of that came on board just had such a great attitude for, creating something really special and uh, uh, Aaron who did like the, the dragonfly the nature scene like quicksil mega, mega scans which is like uh, photogrammetry of like the world of like mountains and you bring the 3d scans into 3d space and it just looks more photorealistic but there's something different between someone who does realistic environments and somebody who does say sci-fi stuff like Vlad who helped out with our end kind of spaceship scene uh, it was just fun to work with different people who are completely differently talented mm. and uh, super fun. Joey, are you understanding any of this? Yeah, I, I was Joey's wondering. here from School of Motion, you guys. Hi, hi everybody. Hi. Yeah, I was, I was actually wondering what tutorials you would watch to figure out how to do all that stuff because normally I would watch a video co-pilot tutorial, but, now, but, then, <laughs> but then you kind of like, you know, you, there's, you're at the top of the mountain already. You can't go higher. What do you do? I guess for me, I just want to create something that is challenging for me, right? So whether it's a tutorial that does something that I've never done before or like working on a project that, what if it was even, what if it, the complexity was even more layers deep than you might originally plan for? And it was definitely like, you know, those growing pains You're of- supposed to say school of motion tutorial. That, 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 you <laughs> forgot, we talked about this beforehand. Oh, okay. I just- <laughs> That's hilarious. What I, I'm kidding. Listen, <laughs> let me just make sure the check clears. Are we good? Okay. So what I meant to say was school of motion, Joey, he does, he's, that's the school where you want motion. Now, uh, we're, we're, actually a real shout out to school of motion, Joey. These guys do some amazing work. There was a question after my Adobe Max presentation and somebody said, hey, I'm kind of like, I'm beyond the beginner stages and I really want to kind of get to that next level. Is there a course or something you would recommend that would really focus me to achieving that level? And I said, bam, School of Motion, Joey, these well, guys get to check out. Right get it out right now. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Cash talks, baby. Yeah, Come on. And I will say, we're going to start doing reaction videos to video copilot tutorials. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> two semi pros react. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One pro. <laughs> <laughs> One pro. <laughs> All right, it's getting a little wild here. I gotta ask you a question: Was sure. there an, are there any Easter eggs hidden in this thing? There are definitely lots of Easter eggs. Can you um, can you give us a hint? Let me try to think. Yeah. So, um, oh my gosh, I feel like there's Easter eggs that we're allowed to talk about, and ones that we okay, give us one that we're allowed to. Oh, talk okay. About. So the deep note is a, is an orchestral arrangement, and that arrangement is on the book inside of the spaceship to the right. So if you actually pause it, you can see the orchestral oh, arrangement. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think, let's see, what else? Like on the spaceship, uh, there's a couple of, you know, like the origins of THX, like the original George Lucas film. Yep. On one of the docking bays is the number written across on one of the, on one of the platforms for that original THX movie. Mm -hmm. So, so if somebody could read and play music, they could pause read the notes and play it and it would sync up. To yeah, but I think they probably have something better to do. You never know. It is the internet. No, you can't. Actually, you can find it online. You can like play it. I don't know oh. if it can be played by one person, but. That's really cool. You want to show me? How does it sound? How does the THX sound? I do. I don't know. <laughs> Chat. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. You Sorry. Know what I mean. You know what yeah, I mean? It's I like that. Yeah. Mm, the rising sound, right? So Chris. Let's sw switch gears here for a second. Okay. Now you've been doing a lot of traveling lately. I've noticed 
getting around Europe, different places. What do you feel like is the most common question that you get asked by people? The com most common question I get asked is, how do I convince the client of this? Like, this is good. Or how do I convince them to buy this design? That's probably the most common. And one. what is your answer to that question? My answer to that question is, that's the wrong question. Because when you have to convince somebody to something, you have an agenda. You have something that is a goal that's other than what your clients need. And it's their business. It's their livelihood. Like you get to make a design or an animation or anything. And you get to go home and do it for somebody else. And if you do it in a way that harms their business, they lose money. People lose jobs. And so as, as good as I may be at something, I can't pretend to know what's at stake or that I even care that much. And so that's where the danger is. So if you hold your client as how do I serve your needs and your goals, if you get alignment around that, that's the thing that you should be doing. And what do they say to that? Yeah, but how do I sell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's just another word for the same thing. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Why did you ask that, though? No, because I'm just curious, Chris, you know, you've been just like really being out there working really hard. And like I, like I noticed just I'm chasing you. Plug in sales are slow. And uh, <laughs> listen, there comes the heckler. That guy is heckling hey, us oh. now. <laughs> is this mic on? All right. No, we, we can have him ejected in a little bit, but yeah, keep going. No, it's great. I, I mean, I thought we were doing a professional interview, but right, this is right. good too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't let him in here. I can't stop him from it. Yeah. Um, keep going. Yeah, what was the question? I was chasing after you. Like you're working hard. Listen, yeah, we're all. Everybody's working hard, you know. I, I think, uh, you know, as long as you're doing like what you love, like you say this, but that's the truth. You, you're not gonna get good. You're not gonna go to that next place unless you really love what you're doing and the impact that you're having on people. Like, you know, not to say something nice about this recent presentation, but the people who have been at Video Copilot for 15 years. There's a guy who said, oh, I'm doing design at Nintendo. I've been following you for 15 years. And, and that's just crazy to me. First of all, how old are we? <laughs> <laughs> Some of us older yeah. than others, yes. <laughs> but that, like, that's wild. That, like, yeah. There's just a certain like, feeling to the, the value that you put out into the world. I know this is something you talk about. Like, when you put real value out there, it's not something that gets ignored like people who are just out there trying to you know, sell these really cool hats and yeah. say the future. But look, here's what no. I'm trying to say. Get a hat, okay? They're on sale. Get the merch, <laughs> all right? You got to level up your wardrobe. That's all I'm saying. How do I get one of these hats? You're going to get one later. Chris, Chris said, I'm going to hook you up with a 50% coupon. I was like, look, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, look, I want to talk about some of these series. If you guys are just joining us for the live stream, I think everybody here knows who Andrew Kramer is. If you're just joining us, this is Andrew Kramer, Video Copilot. Check out his YouTube channel. He's been doing it a long time. He's creating a lot of value for a lot of people. He saved our butts many times when we are in the composite and my team was doing something stupid. I'm like, guys, guys, look at this. This is how you make clouds. This is how you do it. It's really easy. Two, two frames. That's all it takes. No more stock footage. But I want, I use you as a case study now. You know that? Okay. Uh-oh. And I'll set it up. Okay. So people usually ask me, uh, you know, why should I share myself? I, I don't want to create clones of myself. I don't want to create competition. I said, well, let me tell you a story about this guy. His name is Andrew Kramer. He puts out tutorials for free to help the community. He builds this amazing audience. And some nobody named J.J. Abrams sees him, falls in love with him, writes an article about him, features him in Wired Magazine to say, like, I wish I had this resources tool as a kid. And then Andrew goes on to do Star Trek, Star Wars, and every star thing that you can think of. And that's just one, probably just one tiny story of the microcosms of this, the universe of stories that you have. So what compelled you early on, because you're a pioneer in this, in giving out high value tutorials that people say, this is better than what I learned in school. This should be a course I should pay for. What compelled you, at the just think back, bring me back yeah. there. What compelled you and what got you over the fear of like people ripping you off? Well, I always felt like I was on the outside from the industry that was so well funded, you know, it was back when stock footage cost $500 for one clip, plugins were thousands of dollars, software was thousands of dollars, computers, and for me, it was just completely out of reach. And I always felt like, you know what, I want to create something that is more accessible to people. If people can learn without having to go spend a lot of money or they can use software like After Effects to do some of these you know, Hollywood style effects, then we don't have to buy that system that costs $10,000. And so that was always sort of my mindset from the beginning. But to your point, 
I didn't know how to do it all yet. And in my early tutorials, I was just passionate. I wanted to learn how to do it. And, you, you know, being part of the community, I remember with Creative Cow and some of the forums. Oh, yeah, all right. You would, you would see, oh, how do you do this? How do you do that? And that would just kind of pique my interest. And, and again, I didn't know the program super well, but I had enough experience to dig around. And that, you know, the community, I would, I would say, hands down is what helped empower me to like really dive like they encourage me and like well how about this and it's like okay well let me you know i remember with like the earth zoom tutorial that you see i did just like some google images and like scaled them up and just parented them and so that you get like an infinite zoom from the earth all the way down to a building and just things like oh somebody said oh out to add some clouds and maybe like a rotation to the camera to kind of give it some scope and like there was always this sort of back and forth that uh, you still see in some really like nice communities, like even Design Twitter. There's a lot of <laughs> we got Design Twitter. That's a mean place. No, no, no. no, no, no. no. There, the people who who support your art and like what you're doing, like there's always just like that encouragement. And so, being on the outside and wanting to like like I mean, look, it was motivating. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make some stock footage, and I'm gonna have even more elements, and I'm gonna sell for forty dollars, or like I wanted, I wanted everybody to have it, you know. And so we went out into the desert, and like we filmed like explosions and blood and fire and smoke. Action essentials. Action essentials. Yes. Customer we, her. Okay. Yep. Okay. Right yep. on. Right on. Yep. And the, you know, that's like we. It's like you see it in a lot of productions, even to this day, the fire elements or the explosion elements. And for us, that like. That's just hugely rewarding to the idea that there were so many people that were in love with creating movies, doing visual effects, and it's just constantly growing. And people are just, uh, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to be afraid to, you know, hide your secrets because the people who are afraid to hide the secrets, like they're the ones that I think are more worried about the sort of like young emergence of talented people and the people who are just pushing through, like Joey, like this guy, he's so talented, he just like, boom, a minute, keep going. Yeah, thank you for that. <laughs> Checks in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be bankrupt by the end of the show. But wait, may, maybe let me rephrase the question because I'm looking for something very direct. Sure. And then when you give it, deliver it right to the camera. OK, sure. the question is this, is that are, are you ever concerned that if you give away the secret sauce that a you won't be hired or B, you will be literally creating your competition? Not for one second. I How think come? What makes you so weird like that? Because when because there's only so much effort and time that can be spent solving a problem. And when you can show people that you are one of those people who can solve those problems, that is your value as an artist, as a technician, as a TD. So there's no sense in hiding that. And I would even say to people who are putting their content online on Instagram, say like, show here, here's what I'm making. I would encourage you make breakdowns of your scene, of your comp, show the world your ingenuity and your genius and how you think to come up with the work that you create. Because as someone who's looking for artists, it's there's no shortage of great looking work out there. But if there's stuff that I can tell, wow, this person really understands, of, like I can't believe the way they solve that problem, it's brilliant. That takes your art to a whole new level. That was, that was a meaty answer. Very good. Pretty good, right? Very good. Okay. Very good. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get personal right now. Okay. So recently you, you're on this like speaking tour and you go to Europe and you're doing this thing. And I have to say this, uh, before I even like really have a real conversation with you, every time I'm at NAB and you're speaking, it's like people into the aisle way. It's like a fire hazard. And it's so, it's so crazy to see the kind of fandom that you've been able to, to grow. How does that feel? And how does that translate over in Europe? I mean, give me the honest answer. Dude. Okay, the honest answer yeah. is that it's the greatest feeling in the world. You know, uh, I, I can sum it up with this one story. When I went to Moscow, there was a guy who came up after my presentation and said, "Hi, uh, you know, my name Comrade. is Comrade." Yep, yep. And he just said, "Hey, I was working in this really dangerous factory in like 2006, and I stumbled across your videos. I started playing around with it." And now I work at this big design studio in Moscow and he's so there's people who are so hungry for knowledge and, and this kind of skill set and they love it that they find the Internet. They find these random videos. They put it in front of them and they learn it and then they pursue it beyond just following a tutorial. They pursue it. And for people to put that much work 
and you know into their self and maybe the seed of it was some tutorial that I created there's nothing more satisfying than someone saying like hey you helped me earn a living because you taught me that beginning steps and to have that kind of an impact like that's that's you know what more could you want that's beautiful when those moments happen really just being really super serious when you can actually make meaningful impact like I know people are gonna love the THX animation for sure but this is like you're changing somebody's life they were gonna go down a, a dark path and you brought them out of the darkness and that's that's some incredible stuff that is happening here yeah so does it hit you like that do you get emotional when people tell you that for sure for sure a little like well like this one guy who, earlier today, you yeah. know, I could say he was kind of getting, you know, like maybe just a little bit nervous, but he was just like, hey, man, I, you really helped me and like gave this guy a big hug. And it was just a sweet moment. Like, I don't, that's like, it, it's real because I guess what's interesting, you know, you say like, oh, I'm, you know, like people go and there's these crowds. But when you're at an event like this, it's not like that. It's like, these are people in the trenches just like you. Like, it's not like someone who's a musician who's famous because I listen to their music. We're all doing, the, we're all rock stars in our own little world. We're like, peers. We're peers. Yes. We're doing the same thing. We're not, uh, you know, we're on that same level playing field. And so for me, it's very like, uh, you know, it feels much more like we're connecting because we're doing the same thing. We've been those late nights and those crazy hours. Like we can relate and connect way more. What's the weirdest fan thing you've had happen? So, um, okay, true story. I'll no. show you my tattoo, Andrew. Hang on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's PG. It's PG, Joey. Sorry, keep your hands you on. You said you had it removed. <laughs> yeah. right. um, crazy fan. I mean, I can't. Has somebody start a conversation with you in the bathroom stall? No, that's usually me. Hey, uh, <laughs> where'd you get those sneakers? No. Hey. Okay. Honestly, I just have. Uh, Good interactions. Like, uh, I don't know. No, nothing weird. Chris, you, you seem like you have something you'd like to tell us. No. Not <laughs> Why don't you tell I, us a story, I'd Chris? I'd like to uh, propose. No. <laughs> no, okay, that's fine. It's just like, you know, you never know because it's the internet. You send out a message and something weird sometimes comes back there on the other side. We've been talking about the very positive things. I just wanted to see if there was a negative side. You expose yourself. And here's what I noticed, too. People who become famous that your audience starts to feel like they have some ownership over you. Like, hey, Andrew, I didn't like the way that you said this. Or maybe you should do this kind of video. And you're like, well, when did that happen? I, you know, I try not to think about that too much. Like, I, I do see it and I do, like, I understand it when it happens to, like, other YouTubers and other people online and celebrities. And, like, you just got to say, what do you love? What, is, what do you want to put out there? And you try not to worry about if you're not, cutting it or if you're not getting there like you, you're never going to be you know every, you've heard the saying like you can't please everybody all the time and that kind of thing and you really have to separate yourself from you know the the goodwill of the community which helps the growth of everything and any kind of a detractor situation you don't want to give those things equal attention you want to move forward positively that's beautiful so the, to answer your question, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take a, let's uh, take, well, we're almost out of time here. Let's take a question from anybody. You guys want to ask a question? Ask him something that, you know. Hey, you're, you're welcome. His question is he wants to say thank you. So he's done that. So, the, okay, beautiful. A ask Andrew a question that would make him a little bit uncomfortable that we're going to find something new. How many kids do you have now, Andrew? Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uncomfortable? <laughs> Look. You know of. Any more than one kid is a lot of kids. No. <laughs> Only prime numbers for Andrew, so you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Sequence. Yeah. <laughs> In case something goes sideways, you got a whole bunch of people who can work for you. Listen, right? labor laws don't apply to your own children. Just throw that, right? that out there. <laughs> All right. I think so. I didn't look it up, but I have a lawyer working on it. Okay. Um, what's? Oh, you, you have a question. Beautiful. All right. Since you've been getting busy doing other work other than video co-pilot, when can we expect like more tutorials? Oh, that's probably your number one question, isn't it? Sure. I bet you it is. So I've been busy on my own sort of development that I think is the point of Video Copilot. So with the THX project, one of the cool things about it is that I had a chance to really deeply learn Cinema 4D, which is something that I haven't had a really good reason to. And being able Checks to like get 
in there and understand it and know how it works. I, I'm, I feel like in the early days of when I was learning After Effects where every new thing was, oh my gosh, wow, this is really cool and this is amazing. And for me, that applies to the greater sort of, you know, existence of Video Copilot is pushing always forward. And I think without me being able to improve my skills, you know, there's only so much you can do with fractal noise and CC glass that if I'm not leveling up my capabilities and the, and the, the tools that we're creating, which by the way, are going to be pretty cool too, we haven't stopped working on those and like things like Element, like we, we know there's sort of like a next generation of tools that uh, are going to be necessary for our own work and that's what we've been sort of hard at work making and uh, as far as tutorials I don't want to just re I don't want to just make a tutorial that's uh, you know because it's Monday or Tuesday or whatever right and so I do spend a lot of time tinkering with ideas that I think will elevate the capabilities of After Effects or a unique solution to a problem like I recently did this uh, sky generation system with Rayleigh light scattering that was like photorealistic and it, you control the time of day with the position of the sun and that process of figuring that out I mean I must have spent you know three or four weeks here and there kind of solving one problem after another and there's just a point where you know maybe I'll spend a month or two on a tutorial not like all at once but you kind of jump around and where I feel like this is this is like gonna be useful to someone like you look at the decay tutorial like it's such a deep dive into procedural effects that to just show it off in a simple way I don't think does it justice than to dive in deeper but the problem of course is that that takes a lot more time and then you have professional work family other things that you're trying to like you want to do it all and you know you have to pick the things that are gonna have the biggest impact Let me say sorry too. That sounded really greedy. Uh, no listen Honestly, give, I don't. Give the mic back, Joey. Give it back. Yeah, I was gonna say like I should have shared first. Thank you for everything you've done for us. <laughs> it's and too then, late, and dude. Then come up Sequence with my really matters. Sequence no, matters. No, I don't mind at all. I don't mind at all. And honestly, like, you know, like, uh, in my own sort of personal like challenges of like sticking to deadlines. The hardest thing is when you have your own personal things. Like when you work for a client, you have a deadline. You have to get it done. All those things that helps a lot. When you're working on your own project and you know. Oh, like take the Saber plugin that we created and like we made it for free and it was cool, but in the last, but I was like, you know what, we need to add these noise procedural effects and the animation. It would really take it to another level. Oh, what about if we could get it to work with text? Now we could just release it and okay, it's all right, but we, we just knew the impact it would have if it had those features. And it's our thing that we're going to give away for free. We didn't want to not do it right the first time. And since it wasn't like a project that you're being paid to do, you're like, yeah, I know we said we'd have it ready, but we just got to get it right. And it's a, a curse in a way too, because you can always make something a little bit better. And that's like probably my own personal like challenge as an artist is, you know, that sort of like, uh, what do they say? Like art is never finished. It's abandoned or a movie is never, it's delivered. I, I think that same thing is, what I try to work into my own like mindset more recently and it's definitely much better than it was before and working on a professional project you don't have that problem but it's probably just my own self-discipline that I'm helping to like get better at I just uh, have this fantasy like my imagination is like Andrew's busy working on some complex problem and he sees something and then he's like oh I figured something new out maybe that might make a nice tutorial for somebody some point because you got to be pushing the edge a little bit to bring it back to the people, right? Is that kind of how it happens? Absolutely. Okay. Well, you don't ever just figure something out. You're working on something unrelated. Right. And then you're like, wait a second. Right. I can use this. And then it... It doesn't happen in a vacuum is what we're saying, right? Like, you don't just sit there blank screen like, oh, this is a new thing somebody never knew they needed before. And I'll make it. And l listen, it's it's a challenge because, you know, you you spend a lot of time on a tutorial and then the next week you're just like, hey, uh, how, do I, how do you make a layer 3D? Watch my new tutorial. It's, there's a certain threshold that you have to make in, tor in, in order to feel confident in, you know, publishing a video that you want people to see. And I think there's a balance to be, to be made, right? Where there's simple, useful content 
And I was, you know, we've thought about this with like a second channel where we can publish really useful things that are maybe not as flashy and like mainstream or wide audience, but stuff that's really useful that will just give us a nice flow of a, an outlet where we don't have to feel so precious about stuff. And I think that's, listen, it's I'm going to encourage help. you to do it. I'm going to do it. When, You've when convinced it, me. When's the launch date? What's, uh, what year is it? When when was it, when this happened? I know it's gonna blow up. It's gonna because the useful things that we take for granted, like you know, it's not that sexy. That's what people really need. It's nice to have these beautiful like month long productions that you put in with comedy and the writing and the visual effects. But man, I just need to learn how to do that one thing, and yeah. you just saved my life. Yeah, yeah. When, when's that happening? Let's let's commit to it. All right. So we have a whole new website that we've been developing, yep. and uh, that's gonna be a really great resource for people that are diving in and creating stuff and. Hopefully this will be the place and uh, very soon. I will say this, next year is the 15th anniversary, anniversary of yep. Video Copilot. Congratulations. A, hey, thanks. He what an them. exciting time wow. to maybe do something big and fun. Okay, so maybe sometime next year, 15th to coincide with the anniversary? Yeah, because if we don't get it done then and it's the 20th and then by then, <laughs> we may not even be alive. <laughs> what happens, we right. might be dead by then. We're all underwater at that point. Okay, I want to just thank you on behalf of everybody here. I know you have a super busy schedule, and it was just great that you're like, dude, I'll come by the booth, and sure. here you are. Thank you very much, Andrew. Had a good time. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Thanks, everybody.